Uh, John 12, verse 27. Did anybody watch a State of the Union for us? You did not. You, you didn't miss anything. Well, that's all right. We saw the whole, that was one of the first ones I think I ever watched that I can recall uh, all the way through. And um, I know when we were at Cleveland Baptist, uh, Pastor Thompson would, uh, am I, is my microphone, my, yeah. Pastor Thompson would preach, uh, and, and not in response to the State of the Union. He, he wasn't uh, giving a rebuttal to that. He would preach the State of the Church Address, just because it was a good topic, and uh, it was, uh, when, when is the State of the Union? Is that January the 20th, or something like that? It's the end of January. And this, this year, it was a month and a half late, Something like that. Anyway, um, twelve twenty seven. Well, first we'll uh, we'll read the word of God because I think that's important to get to that first. My title t today is For This Cause, For This Cause. In verse, in John chapter 12, verse 27, And now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. For this cause. I mean, there, there's a cause. And, um, Jesus had a purpose and a reason. I, I hope all of you have the, the same thing, a, a purpose and a reason that God has put you here. I, uh, I thought I'd ask this question. I kind of uh, uh, asked Paul ahead of time. He did not have the, uh, an answer. Now, of all the presidents, see, we preach in here. But where should the preaching really happen? Out of here. That's where it should go on. I mean, this is a limited audience. And so we, uh, we put up that uh, you're, you're going to hell on the bus, so that's preaching to people. We have the billboard going, that's preaching to people outside there. I'm more interested in preaching outside the church. And uh, I, I, uh, you say, well, you had a fantasy. Well, I have this uh, thought, well, what if uh, a, a cycle ago, a couple cycles ago, is uh, Pre President Tr uh, Trump, pre was it President Trump preached, uh, not preached, but uh, he gave the State of the Union. He hands the, the, uh, the uh, uh, House Majority Leader the, the uh, um, his speech, and then what did she do with it right after the speech was over? She rips it in pieces. It, now the, uh, the new leader said that'll never ever happen again. The new leader of the house, he said that'll never happen again. And uh, I mean, how disrespectful. I, I don't know where these people get off. It, it, it's the weirdest thing. But I thought of these two instances I got like three that we I've added here that isn't really part of this sermon, but it would it fits in the sermon. I, I, I'm gonna ask a question. Which president, uh, starting with all the presidents that I lived under, it's there's Eisenhower. I don't remember anything about Eisenhower. I was too little. Eisenhower. Then there's Kennedy, I remember Kennedy. Then there was, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a history buff here. Then there was Johnson. Then there was Nixon. Then there was Gerald Ford. Then there was Bush Senior, help me. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Carter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whoa, what, what, man. I, there was Jimmy Carter, then Ronald Reagan, then Bush Sr., then Bush Jr. Uh-huh. Then there's Clinton. Then there's Bush Jr. Then there, that's 10. Then there's Obama, Barack Obama. And this isn't to say good things or bad things about any of these people. There's Barack Obama. Then there's, help me out, say it. Pardon? Then there's Trump. And then there's Biden. So that's 13 presidents that I've lived under. Now, we're preaching. So th this is a sermon. It's not a political sermon. This is a sermon uh, I, of, of all those 13 presidents. And some of them had two terms. Of all of those presidents, which president was accused the next day with headlines of the uh, State of the Union address that he preached a sermon. He preached to us a sermon. Does anybody recall? I, 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 now I remember this. Now I know you're clicking on clicking and cheating. Anybody know? Reagan. Pardon? Reagan. There's a, ga a guess of Reagan. Wrong. Trump. Trump. It's the old, no. It's the, I believe, it's the only president that was never elected. He was never elected. Ford. Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford was never elected. He served, uh, you know, the three quarters of a term or whatever. He was accused of preaching a sermon. Do you, anybody recall what he did? Nobody recalls that. I think it was the end of the, the end of his speech. But anybody know what's behind him? What is? would be up on the wall. No, I don't think so. It's the great seal of America. What does it say on it? Which came out and was, uh, was presented, it was put on the coins in, during the Civil War. Yes. I believe this is what happened. He turns around, points to the seal, and says, in God we trust. And he incorporated that in his speech. And the headlines, I believe, after that, the following day, was he preached a sermon. Now, did he preach a sermon? No. No. But they couldn't take that little tidbit. <laughs> In God we trust. Nobody remembers that. Well, uh, after service, click on, do some clicking and see if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm pretty sure. He says, In God we trust, and they accused him of preaching. Now, and I thought that would uh, be good for this sermon. There was another one situation. Uh, a stockbroker, a famous stockbroker, he is supposed to present, uh, or he's the main speaker at a broker's convention. This is like a national convention of stockbrokers. Of uh, if you name off all the big traders, whoever they are, there's a big convention, and so he is the main speaker at the convention such as the State of the Union for the, you know, America, he is now the main speaker at the Stockbrokers Convention. Now, where I heard this, I can't recall where I heard it. 
but I heard it years ago. So he's going to give the main speech, you know, the pep rally for all the stockbrokers, right? And so he, this is how he opens up. He says, uh, I, uh, I'm not going to talk to you about money. Everybody here already knows how to make money, he says. All you stockbrokers know how to make money. And by the way, they're, 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 that is a racket. We, we've seen enough Perry Mason and enough old movies to know of how they do this insider trading and they get tips and all. It's a racket, folks. So he said, now listen, all of you people know how to make money ahead of time. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to give you a speech on that. Do you know what he said? What was his speech? Anybody want to guess? Pardon? His speech was on how to get saved. Apparently he recently got saved and he wanted to tell them all how to get to heaven. That was his speech. Now what if, now I know Joe Biden wouldn't have done it, but he hands his speech in to the um, majority leader of the House, and he scraps it, and then he witnesses for the next hour. And, you know, like they accused Gerald Ford of preaching if he actually went and preached. Imagine that. I mean, I fantasize about that stuff. Isn't our goal to go outside of this, these walls and do that? Now, I told the wife this, that if I had retired, I, I, I know one preacher retired at 62, uh, my, my, one of my main ones, he retired at 62. What if I retired at 65? I mean, I have... I have my 40 quarters in, so I collect Social Security. What, what, what if I retired? What if I had, what if I quit just three or four years ago? It, it's, it's, it's like, it's like interest. During Jimmy Carter, this is a fact, if all you did was bank your money, put it in the bank, drawing interest, your money would dub, double. Now, I know the interest rates aren't the same. It would double every five years. If you just put in, let's say, $100 a week in the bank, that your money would double every five years. It, you would make an astronomical amount of money. When? At the beginning or at the end? At the end. You would make an astronomical amount of money because interest rates were so high. The thing is, if I quit five years ago, we would never have been on tele never on television. We wouldn't have been on the radio. None of that would have happened. Because God's blessing for you is right around the corner. You just don't know it yet. So hang on, Sloopy. <laughs> hang on, Sloopy, hang on. Your blessing is right around the corner. Now, just imagine if, what's his name, Biden had handed his speech in and said, I'm going to preach instead. And he did that for an hour. I, who knows, maybe half of, half of them would have walked out. I don't know what they would have done. But what if you had the opportunity to do that? Would you look at the teleprompter and just regurgitate that dumb speech? Oh, I, it, well, that would have been a miracle. But what if you had the opportunity? The opportunity for this cause. John 12, 27. Now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. 
but for this cause came I unto this hour. All the events, in general, all the events that happened in, in our Lord's life was for us. The coming of Christ. The very life of Christ. The suffering of Christ. The cross of Christ. The death of Christ. The resurrection of Christ. Then came the ascension of Christ. And after that, the salvation of Christ that was given us. Or the salvation in Christ. And now for you and I, the life in Christ. And then we wait for the return of Christ. And for the final, the, the epilogue, as they would say in a story, the final chapter, the eternity with Christ. Amen. Uh, for this cause came I into the world, Christ. It is he who fills his father's sacred trust. So where shall we begin? Today, we, we have stepped apart from the world. Now, now listen, I know they said that, that the president did not really address the people's problems. The, the, uh, uh, there, there is a way to taint the actual facts, like employment's way up. People, uh, Tons of people have got tons and tons of jobs. But in reality, see, they don't give you the footnote. Those were all government jobs. How does that help you? And so on. In other words, it's all kind of twisted so that it, it, it gives you a fall. It doesn't help the one that, that where you, you and I are hurting. But for all those that are, we have stepped apart from the world right now. There is, there is a verse, I believe it's in Colossians. Pastor Thompson preaches a, a sermon on it. It's, a, it's a, a good three or four verses. It's set apart. You set apart, put it aside. Then you come in here where you become holy. And then you set out from here out into the world. It, it's like three or four verses. I think it's in Colossians. Three or four verses in a row. It is really good. So we have stepped apart from the world. I mean, you've got your things going on. Whatever those things may be. But for a brief time, we are set apart from the world to gather around God's word. I mean, just imagine if for that hour, instead of the State of the Union, he had preached for an hour for people who have probably have never heard anything like that. Gathering again, as we have done these many years, I trust we have ripened together. You know, we get so accustomed to this that we probably lose sight that Every sermon and every week, we change a little bit. We get a little riper. We have ripened together, growing under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I ask, are we prepared to hear of Christ? Are you prepared right now? Right this moment. Or are our minds filled with worldly pleasures, worldly cares, there are people that really have sincere problems, real problems. Worldly pleasures and worldly cares making us ill-prepared to hear of Christ. I hope never, never to cheapen our time spent together by turning our fellowship, as it were, into a den of thieves. I mean, that took place in the temple. Bringing in the world so as not to edify the saints. We are here to edify the saints. And, and, and that's a big deal with me. About er, everything is getting, uh, it's kind of like construction. Things are getting by far better than they were years ago. In some things. In some things, it's getting the opposite. There's good and bad. 
I don't like to cheapen. I don't want my wife and I, our, our lives to be cheapened by a cheap world. And God forbid we ever do that in the church. Cheapen it. Yet hearing of Christ will make the cares of this world flee away. Even if it be for a season, or maybe this, the, the next half hour, bringing rest for the weary traveler of this life. You've come apart for the world just to have this brief moment of rest. Hearing of Christ is the shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. Every week, every hour, Christ shines more and more unto us until we finally see him. We should be as Moses when he approached the burning bush was commanded to take off his shoes for the place on which he stood was holy ground. Approaching Christ as if it were on holy ground. For this cause, all of why Christ was here was for us. Must we take instruction from the, I mean, it's sitting there in the assembly of the Senate and the uh, the house, they're, they're all together in there. There's Muslims in there. I mean, they've elected Muslims. That was the only uh, Arabic uh, Muslim uh, job I ever did. I made these stainless steel tags in Arabic, numbers. I couldn't read it, but you know, I engraved it. It was high end, man. And it was for their boxes, for their shoes because they take their shoes off before they go in. So I ask, must we take instruction from the Muslims who remove their shoes when they enter their mosque? So should we remove the shoes, the shoes of this world's cares when approaching Jesus Christ. And whether we be in the Old or the New Testaments, are there not treasures alike in each? The old, which are a shadow of things to come. You know, whenever, when, whenever I preach or witness to a Jewish person, I want to be armed with the Old Testament to be able to show them Jesus in love. Like, then who is this person? And read in those verses. Because that's who they're in turn, turn, tuned to, this Old Testament. For this cause, all of why Christ was here was for us. We need to be as Paul, determined to know nothing else, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. In the depths of despair, Jeremiah makes the most promising statement. You know, to be able to Comfort people that are really experiencing being down, man. Jeremiah's on the hilltop. He sees Jerusalem destroyed. He's the only one left. Everybody else is carried away captive, ran to Egypt. And he says, The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Say this, my fellow worshipers, and live by it. And what more could be desired? You know, I mean, for people that are really experiencing trouble, but this is what it says, I'll say it again. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. Christ is the best of treasures, the treasure of all treasures. Though we still labor for the meat which perisheth, I mean, tomorrow we're going to go right back to work. And during the week, we mind earthly things, yet with Christ as our portion, the things of this world will not be worthy our notice. We should be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. It is in Christ wherein, when others are cast down, that we may possess our souls in patience, <coughs> patiently waiting for him. 
knowing that in heaven we have a more enduring substance. Think of all that we have in Christ. Ah, my God, my God, Jesus says this on the cross. Think of all we have in Christ. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Said our Lord, yet for you and I, though he was forsaken, yet we never forsaken, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. Though he was slain, yet we are spared. Though we take nothing with us, yet on the other side we inherit all things. Though our body decays across the street, yet he gives us a glorious body. Though Christ had no place to lay his head, yet he gives us a mansion in heaven. Amen. Christ declared a sinner who knew no sin to make us, you and I, sinless. It is as Jacob, see Esau represents us, the sinner, but Jacob stands in his place to receive the blessing as Jacob stood in Esau's stead. He is worthy our praise. As it says in Revelation, worthy is the Lamb. For this cause came he into the world with Christ, what we had counted gain, we now count as lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Christ the King, and we his humble servants, and Christ gives grace to the humble. He gives his graces to the humble people. So we may say, great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Christ is the king. He holds a scepter to rule us and a shield to defend us. Thou, O Lord, art a shield to defend them. If it had not been for his tender mercies, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. See, we, we, we think that, oh, we're at the mercy of all these people, and it, little do we know how many guardian angels are around us fighting for us right now. Amen. Otherwise, we'd be consumed. When our hearts, when our hearts the humblest, when our prayers are the most fervent, when our faith the strongest, when our strength the weakest, when our enemies the strongest, then the Lord is gracious unto us. He is our arm every morning and our salvation in the time of trouble. Amen. Is not Christ described as a lamb having seven horns and seven eyes? That's what, how he's described in Revelation 5, 6. Seven eyes to see our every need and, see our, and to see our enemies. He has seven horns to push back the enemies of his people. And he does that each and every day for you and I. Are not the sons of Zariah too strong for us? That's what David says. I believe these are his, uh, these are his cousins. You know, Joab and the two brothers, the, the, the three of them, was the sons of his, I believe his aunts. It may, they were his cousins. The sons of Zerah be too hard for me, the king of Israel says. But go to Christ, though our enemies be too strong, though our sins be too strong, though this world be too strong, yet we will have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For this cause, see Christ has a cause. For this cause Christ came into this world. Yet you may say, you may say as Job said, Oh, that I, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. Sometimes, sometimes people look. I guess I'll tell this story. My son, Sonny's not here. He was in the hospital as a little boy with croup. 
I'll never forget, he was a year, year and a half. He was sick, man. He was in an oxygen tent. He, we, we were really nervous. And he was at Parma Hospital. And uh, the wife was in there, I think with one of the kids or some of the kids. And I was, I parked the car and I, I, I went to get the car, and, but I was waiting at the exit of the hospital and visiting was over. And I was, I, I'll just find my wife when she leaves the hospital. She walked right by me and I never saw her. Ever wonder, you know, with, with your phone and your pinging and all, all, all the, the advantages you have, do you imagine, you know, th this is a, a tactic they use in books and in movies where two people pass, they know each other, but they don't meet. That you could lose somebody and never find them again. I thought that to myself, that what if I lost my wife like that and I'd never find her again? So I, I thought about this, I, I added this to it, I went to look for it. What if the Lord passed by, you preach this at the, uh, for the State of the Union, that the Lord is there and he passes by, yet the pe people perceive it not. They don't recognize him. There is a verse about it. It's like John 3, John 3, 16. I always wanted to do a, a, a sermon on 316, just 316. All the 316s in the Bible, they, it, it's like the address it means something. Well, this one is Job 911, 911. All the 911s and how they t turn into an emergency. This is an emergency. And to preach before the lost, not to preach in the church, but to preach before the lost. It's an emergency. Nine, Job 9.1.1 says this, Lo, he goeth by me, and I see him not. He passeth on also, but I perceive him not. It's an emergency. We want to reveal Jesus and we reveal and they still don't see him. It's an emergency. You may say as David, all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. You may say, carest thou not that we perish? But always remember this. Christ is in the ship asleep on a pillow. Rest assured, the ship will, your ship will not sink. God is our refuge. I, I do this, I, I, I say this, and I begin this. It's, it's 10 verses, Psalm 46. And I always do that in, in a hospital. God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear. Boy, those are comforting. This too is why he came, for this cause I came. Christ is in the ship of your life. You may say, carest thou not that we perish? Yet Christ promises us troubles, troubles. In the world ye shall have tribulation. He promises us that, so we must expect it. As in the potter's house, where the Lord makes a work on the wheels, so he makes us again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. As he shapes and forms us, it hurts sometimes. A vessel meet for the master's use, a vessel unto honor, one that is prepared unto every good work. In this tribulation, like that potter on the potter's wheel, and will refine them as silver is refined in a furnace. He shall sit as a refiner and purify purifier of silver and purge them as gold and silver. He will not try us above which we are able to endure. He promises we will be able to bear it. He looks in the door of the furnace. I mean, he, he, he's skilled at this. He knows just when to pull that out of there. 
He sits as the refiner watching the furnace, that the fiery trial be not too intense, that we will not, that we be not kept in, in it a moment longer than necessary. It's kind of like heat treating. My, my father taught me that years ago. I, probably if I had to do it today, I, I couldn't. But as a kid, my dad was, was now gone. And I wanted a hardness. If, if it's too hard, it's, the steel will actually shatter like glass. And you have to draw it back so that when you strike it, it doesn't break. And, and, and it goes by, and you tell the steel, this is high carbon steel, you tell by its color. You heat, heat it up to cherry red, you draw it back, you know just when to quench it. Oh, it would, it would have been fun. We, we, we would have fun doing it. Those are like trials, though. Trials, for this cause he came, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Hey. For this cause he came, that we would receive the graciousness of his Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly. He didn't shed it on us a little bit, or a little bit at a time, abundantly, through Jesus Christ our Savior. That the grace of God would season our souls, give it a new character. You, you know what, you're, you're going to be a character one way or another. Either a character for the devil or a character for the Lord. Right? He gives us a new character, a new life, a new purpose, a new desire, a new outlook for this cause he came. When the fruit is picked, you know, what happens at the end of the season when you get the green tomato or the apple is still a little green? Where do you put it? You put it in the window to still yet ripen it. When fruit is picked too soon, they are placed in the sun to ripen it. Placed into the sun. And we're placed in the sun, which is God's son. Jesus Christ, that's the sun, which is God's word and God's trial. So we are placed in the rays of God's son, Jesus Christ, to ripen us. To make us mature Christians. It is like a, you read like the two lips, the Old Testament and the New Testament, the two lips of God, the symphony of his lips, the symphony of his lips for this cause, for this cause should calm the troubled soul. You know, they, uh, uh, that, uh, I, I can't think of her name right now, the one gal from um, Virginia or Carolina, North or South Carolina. She said, mention her name, the girl that got killed. A girl got murdered, you know, a week or two ago. Uh, an illegal alien killed her. I mean, a tragedy. But think of the great woman in the Bible, as the great woman said to Elisha, it is well, even though her son lay dead. Are we not the body of Christ? says, now ye are the body of Christ, and is not Christ now in glory? He's in glory, is he not? So then, are we not just as much in glory as we are here? We're just as much there as we are here for the body of Christ. We are, as the Bible says, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. For this cause I came, that Christ would be the theme of our daily thoughts. The penning of your thoughts would contain much of Christ. As a pen, in, a, a ready writer, an iron pen he talks about in songs. For this cause I came that your holy soul may have new breath, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. He came to die that we might live. For this he came. For this cause he came, had we had our way, 
You know, we want our way. Doesn't every, we're like little children. We want our way. Mommy, I want my way. We <laughs> stomp our feet. We want our way. Had we our way, he had still lived. But it pleased God to bruise him. The disciples would not have let him die, but, but his ways are not our ways. Your desire may be to have directed your life differently, but his ways are not our ways. His way is the best way. And this is the way walking you. And for this cause he came. Ever lose a loved one? You know, we lost a baby two weeks old. Like, like I mentioned, that young girl was just killed two weeks, three, a month ago by that illegal alien. I remember people here telling me that the preacher would say, oh, God is after you. When a young person died, well, man, God showed me a verse to rebuke that. The righteous perisheth. And no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Only God knows what was in store for that girl. And maybe in his mercy he takes her. I don't know. The younger, the more cherished. When fruit is ripe, it is picked. And God picks the ripe ones. For this cause, he came. If we had our way, our great Redeemer had not bled nor died. Right? Isn't that, Peter wants to save him, right? For this cause, he came that, he, that we would hear his prayer. His prayer, not my will, but thine be done. For this cause he came that we hear his last farewell, his last farewell. Not as it would seem it is finished. That was his, not his last farewell. His last farewell was, but surely I come quickly. For this cause he came that when our course here on earth is over, we will not say our ship was wrecked and lost, but to safe arrived in the port of heaven. And do not ships carry cargo, and all the cargo safe as well. To this cause he came that we would be a fit companion in eternity. A faithful page of one's mind would be the faithful page of one's memory. Yet our memory, you and I don't really have them. The only memory of, of Christ we have is written in this book. Yet our memory of Christ is void, for we have yet to see him. As it says, face to face. For this cause he came, for we will never have to remember him. For we have yet to meet him. And when we do, we will know, know and, and realize that the half had not yet been told. For this cause he came, that his spirit would rest upon those that remain, you and I, that others can point upon God's children and say as they said of Elijah, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. For this cause he came, for as he has labored, so should we. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. You know, I, I, I like to be unique. You know, Paul writes that. He wanted to be the first to preach at a, a certain place or something. But folks, there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. <laughs> so we would say, so we shall say, what seemeth you best, I will do. We should say to Christ, as Hannah said to her husband, Elkanan, do what seemeth thee good. For this cause he came that we labor together. 
So when the days of this life are over, where will you retire? Well, where will you retire? When disputing over where Christ had come, they were arguing about it. Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. They were done arguing. I know Pastor Thompson said, I remember he, he said this, that they, they went home. <clears throat> and they, it doesn't say why they did, but they were probably looking up in the Bible to find out if he did come from Galilee. They were looking it up. But for those that argue such things, their place of retirement is not the same as Christ. For after they said that, the next verse, and every man went unto his own house, the next verse, yet in the next verse, where did Christ retire? Where did he go? Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. That's a type of heaven. That's where you and I are going to retire. For this cause he came that we would not find our home here, but find our home in heaven with Christ. Christ, it is he who fills his Father's sacred trust. We have stepped apart. I guess we're done this morning. We have stepped apart from the world. I hope you have. Stepped apart from the world, but for a brief time, Boy, I wish I could have given the State of the Union address and given this for the address. We have stepped apart from the world, but for a brief time, to gather around God's word, gathering again as we have done these many years. I trust we have ripened together, growing under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Even if you were not prepared to hear of Christ, I hope in hearing Christ, you have been edified. I hope never to cheapen our time spent together by turning our fellowship, as it were, into a den of thieves, bringing in the world so as not to edify the saints. Hearing of Christ will make the cares of this world flee away, giving rest for the weary traveler of this life. We need be as Moses when he approached the burning bush, commanded to take off his shoes. And may we too approach Christ as if we were on holy ground. <laughs> I guess I'll turn and point, not to the cross, but to this great seal. Seal. In God we trust. And let them print. He preached this sermon. <laughs> now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. For this cause, it is the reason why Christ was here. It was for you and for I. Amen. Shake hands before leaving.